Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show with your host, Phil Tarrant. Hi, good everyone. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show. How's it going? Uh, it's a pleasure for you to join us as we navigate uh, property property investment, particularly the case in the topsy-turvy world that we live in today. And I'm personally a bit sick of talking about uh, Australia's property markets being in a state of flux and uh, no one really understanding what's happening in, in Sydney and Melbourne and all this sort of stuff. I think it's been done to death. Um, Unfortunately, we seem to always end up back at this theme because it's what's dominating most of the headlines these days. I think uh, the consensus now is that, uh, yes, we are in a period of softening. Yes, this is part of the cycle. Yes, the sky's not going to fall in. This is just naturally what happens with property over time. Last year, Sydney prices, uh, a little bit more than Melbourne, softened or come back sort of 8 to 9%, uh, a lot less in some areas, a lot more in other areas. And uh, the consensus is that it's probably going to continue to soften over this coming period as well to a point where it will stop and then it's going to go up from there. So uh, when it starts going up from there, it's probably the start time buying. But uh, anyway, I'm not here today to talk about when to strike, when that bottom of the market's going to be. I'm here today to talk about how you can be finance ready. So when there's a point in time when it's the correct time for you, based on your circumstances, to start buying, you're prepared, you're ready, you're geared, and you can go out there and buy it properly with confidence. But I'm not a mortgage broker. I fortunately have a mortgage broker in my life, and that sounds a bit endearing, but uh, who's helped me secure financing through all the stuff that I do in my property portfolio. You may have heard of this guy beforehand, Ross Kane. He is from Aussie, Parramatta, and Rouse Hill. I've got him back in the studio. We're going to have a chat about finance and being finance ready and buyer ready. Ross, how are you going? I'm great, bud. Happy New here. Year. Oh, it's great to be here. Happy New Year to you. Mm. What'd you do over the break? Just had a great time down in Victoria, actually, down in Ocean Grove and took the kids down there, had a bit of a surf with some family. Really good. That's good. So you're back? I'm back. Was it good to be back or are you sort of dreading being back? I've come back. I've come back refreshed and pumped, ready for a big year. Okay. Mm. So why is it going to be a big year? Well, I think there's lots of opportunities, you Mm. know, for people with existing loans and there's going to be new opportunities in the market, Um, you know, especially out here in Rouse Hill, it's booming out there, lots of new properties coming. So that store, um, I'm excited about that. Um, And for investors, I think there's some real opportunities to look at some, you know, buying well and also just reviewing their portfolio and seeing what they can do to, to, you know, bunker down some cash flow and uh, making sure they're ready you know, when the time comes and they can get back in the market again. Mm. So um, me and you, we we see the world the same way when it comes to property investment. Our, our portfolios sort of look a bit the same, sort of in terms of numbers and the types of properties and where our LVR positions are. So the, the, there's some similarities. We, we, we have the same ethos to, to investing and um, uh, it seems to work quite well for us. Um, the challenge a lot of people are facing right now is in, in terms of financing. We spoke about this a fair bit last mm. year. So at the start of 2019 now, and I use that period over Christmas to think about what, what's next for my property journey this this coming year and um, property is always a game of finance but in 2019 it's definitely going to be defined by being a game of finance now I know every time you come to this podcast you get about a thousand people calling you up saying uh, can you be my mortgage broker the message is that no you can't you're mine leave you alone you're too busy I need you all for myself because I've got some uh, some ambitious plans over 2019 to capitalize on this market which you you know about and and we talk about that mm. when we discuss our portfolio but for the people that you've seen so far this year, for, for people who have gone through this Christmas cycle thinking about what next for, for property and those conversations you've had so far, what's the word on the street? What's the feeling on the street from, from property investors? Are, they, are, they, are the good ones bullish and ambitious or is everyone sort of sitting around going, oh, what am I going to do? Yeah, we, we see both types. Yeah. You, know, you see the the people that have, and you know, the the phone has actually been running hot since mm. we have come back from holiday. So prior to you know Christmas, people are putting things on hold, um, waiting for. But this year, people have come back, so there is a mix. But there is also a mix that of people that are listening to you know whatever excuses they want, and you'll always see that whether it's the election, whether it's the slowdown in the property markets, whether you know there's all of those excuses and some people that's all they ever have is a mm. reason not to where it's the you know the the people who get ahead in this world is the look at the opportunities take into account the pros and the cons of buying property and, and looking at and, and making informed smart decisions so, so i don't know how many loans you've done in your mm. career in mortgage breaking and and for for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with ross and his business he's uh, he's been um one of or or the top aussie uh, mortgage broker for for many many years so you've seen warts and all i know yeah. these days you focus a lot more on the investment side you've got a big team underneath you now that mm. that do a lot of work 
your relationship with property investors, can you tell pretty quickly whether or not an investor is going to be one of these excuse merchants and all the reasons why they shouldn't be investing versus those who are confident and educated and ready to make decisions? How long does it take you to, to make that call? Yeah, I mean, what we call in the industry is analysis paralysis. Mm. So you, you get to people and, you know, probably some of the people that have come from the podcast are you know, great examples where they've listened to every podcast under the sun, they've read a lot of books and they get to the point where they're just that confused. They've they've taken in so much information mm. that they it stops them from taking action. And as you and I know in terms of building our portfolios, the thing – that helps you get ahead is actually taking action and and um, and whether that be taking action on purchasing a property or renegotiating your rates, renegotiating your rents. It's not a passive game property. It's something that you've really, you know, it's not something that you worry about, but it's something that you have to constantly take action mm. um, in. So if you if you are keen, you need to you know. Take some action. Just again, someone. Just that's an interesting point, uh, Ross, because uh, someone that we both know, Tom Panos. Oh, he's, he's prolific on Facebook, right? You can't mm. go on Facebook without seeing Tom, and he does his Sunday night rant. And if you've never listened to Tom, go and check it out. He's a good guy, a good friend. Um, but uh, I saw a piece from him the other day, and and his message was, uh, and I'll paraphrase this, and I'm sure I'll get this right. Eighty percent of winning is beginning. So where a lot of people will sit around and do everything under the sun before they make a decision to do something, whereas he, his point, and I, I, I um, agree with this, is that just get going with it. You know, At least you're making decisions. So property is no different. But to be successful in property, you need to have your financing uh, in order. It is a game of finance, um, particularly now uh, with um, softening markets, tighter serviceability, all this sort of stuff. So it's those investors who are winning or, or beating the finance game are those who are most successful in property investment moving forward, particularly as the market starts creating opportunities for, for people. So can we just do a big recap because, you know, you've been coming on the show now for sort of a couple of years. Mm. Uh, we've gone through the process of, of educating people on all the app recommendations and, and subsequent changes around caps to lending and interest only lending and uh, all this sort of stuff. And then last year, the big theme was tightening up on serviceability. So um, even though rates were pretty reasonable, um, it was still harder to get uh, mortgage finance because the banks assessed you differently. Mm. Um, how does 2019 look? What's it going to look like? So we're still seeing continued uh, – the focus is more on living expenses and, you know, we're getting emails almost weekly with, you know, benchmarks changing and, and – a lot more scrutiny on people's living expenses. So it's not getting any easier. You know, there is talk from the government telling the banks to ease up their credit guidelines. But, you know, banks, as we know, uh, to implement changes, it takes some time. And then to also pull back those changes and to free up the credit markets is going to take some time. So banks are getting told to, to start don't be so hard on people. In, oh, I mean, there's been reports in the paper yeah. that, that, you know, it's, it, they're saying because the regulation has gone... It's tightened too much, yeah, has it? To yeah, to a point where, the, you know, the property market is, you know, starting to come off and we've spoken about that in, you know, in particular in Sydney and Melbourne. But in terms of, you know, the banks need to be able to lend money to, to continue. And so in some cases they're saying... They've been too stringent on in enforcing these rules rather than taking a, a more open-minded sort of approach. So when the banks get the green light from uh, the regulators to um, be uh, not as stringent on credit, banks inherently love to lend money. So um, what's that going to look like for, for 2019? Is it going to be easier to obtain finance in 2019 versus 2018 and, and what do you need to look like as an investor to actually be able to get finance quite easily? Yeah, so as I said before, living expenses is going to be something that they're going to look at and continue to look at mm. quite strictly. So as a property investor, you need to you know, stick to a budget and ensure you know your spending is in line with that budget uh, because the banks are going to have, be looking at that. So you've got to ensure that your you know, your cost of living and mm. is uh, in line. And, yeah, so because your goal is to invest in property, you've got to look at what you're spending outside of that. So your personal monthly balance sheet needs to look pretty good. Exactly. So don't spend more money than what you earn. 
Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, 101 and, stuff. Exactly. Yeah. It's simple just looking at, you know, the basic things like what, what are you spending around and what's discretion? What what are some of the areas that you can potentially pull back in? Mm. What are some of the credit card limits that you're, you know, that you're not potentially using? What some of the, you know, the higher interest personal debt like car loans and credit cards that you can, you know, pay off and cancel? You know, what are some of the practical things that you can do to increase your serviceability yourself? Or mm. what's in your control and there was some stuff that came out late 2018 around um this interest only lending cap sort of being removed can you give us a bit of inside read on that because a lot of people might not understand it yeah so and there was a bit of media and i saw on social media you know, investors got a little bit excited saying yes well the cap has been removed so what does that mean it means that the banks now you know, don't have a limit. So where they were limited to 30% of the, the loans on their books. Now that cap has been removed, which means, and at that time where the cap was introduced, we saw a different price difference between principal and interest and interest only loans. And uh, the cost for an interest only loan was more expensive than a principal and interest. But also what we saw was um, APRA also introduced a credit criteria which meant that those loans needed to qualify under the new assessment criteria that APRA put in. And so I think that's the thing that's been missed in all that. While the cap has been removed, the assessment policy which stops a lot of people from qualifying from rolling over their investment loans for another five years because they don't qualify under the new criteria is still there. So it's yeah, it's, it's still um, – we, we will probably see prices for interest-only loans come back down over the next 12 months, I would say, um, but we're not going to see a flood of existing people with interest-only loans. And, you know, over the next you know couple of years, there's billions of dollars in interest-only loans that are going to roll off interest-only mm-hmm. to principal and interest. So, you know, that's something to for our investors to consider, making sure that, you know, you – have the cash flow to be able to afford those loans as they roll over. It's an interesting point. So, and I've seen it in in uh, the smart property investment portfolio where some of these um, uh, interest only periods have rolled rolled off into uh, principal and interest, and it's just a matter of for us to to refinance. And it is essentially it's refinance because back in the day they used to just roll over and you just go to another, you choose another five year interest only period, and you wouldn't really need to do much at all. But now it's a a full assessment, isn't it? You've got to put another application and yeah, go through the whole ring. Yeah, it's just roll like and- applying for a, a total new application. Yeah. They they do the full assessment for living expenses, looking at looking at your whole criteria. So it's as good as a full new application because it is a changing contract. Mm. Um, it's taking your loan, you know, an extra five years interest only, which means you'll have five years less to pay it off once that loan rolls over. So APRA is saying, well, banks, you need to make sure that this person can qualify to pay that loan off in a short, shorter time because you're changing the loan contract. Would, would the recommendation and a mortgage broker is not there to give advice around what properties to invest in or they can give they can give sort of um, uh, support in helping you make decisions on how you approach a particular financing scenario. Um, would the recommendation be for, for some people to say, let it shift over to principal and interest because if your properties are in Sydney, Melbourne, as a softening market, maybe it's time to start paying down some of the, the principal component. That said, though, you can not you can only claim the uh, interest um, component of uh, a loan. You can't claim the actual principal component if you're paying it off. Is that correct? Yeah, so the yeah. interest is the tax deductible portion. Yeah. But in saying that, you know, we're both property investors and the aim, you know, with, with property investment is to get to a net asset position where, you know, you, you've got um, a strong rental income and that's going to be your, your income. So at some point in time, you need to consolidate your portfolio and mm. pay it off. And, you know, if you're looking to remortgage or you're looking to, to borrow in the future, you know, every every dollar that you you pay off, you can potentially get five more, you know, from a lending perspective as well. So, you know, over time, it's, you know, you, you want to pay it down. So it's not a bad strategy for some. And when you look at, you know, some of the rates that you can get compared to what they're paying 
on an interest only loan, like some fixed P and I rates I've been looking at compared to what people have been paying on uh, variable interest only. Um, are quite different. So, you know, some people might find that when they look at renegotiating their rates or fixing their rates, their repayments aren't that different mm. to what they're paying at the moment. And I think we covered that off uh, last time we got together mm. to do a portfolio update and our portfolio, the, the process that we went through and mm. uh, to, to look at that and uh, we'll, we'll share that um, uh, in, in a little bit as well. Um, so so securing funding in a, in a changing market, we're in a changing market right now, is it always a challenge to secure funding is it often it's a little bit easy to secure it but you know in in a market which is changing right now where property prices sydney melbourne we're talking about uh, are softening is it harder to get good valuations as it sits right now and therefore you know funding is, is more difficult uh obviously you know it, when we look at places like sydney and melbourne you know the thing that a lot of people forget is that over the last you know, 10 years, those properties have gone up by about 80%. And, mm. you know, we had you know, 15 plus percent, you know, three consecutive years. And, you know, probably the last year where it went by 17%, we didn't expect that it would continue to go. And it, and it did, right? Mm. So the fact that it's coming off, to me, isn't that big a deal, right? Because as an investor, I've had really, really good growth. So you bought at the right time of the cycle, yeah, to my original point. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas if you've been one of these investors that have bought at the peak of the market and then you're looking to buy property number two or property number three, you're going to make it more difficult because you haven't had that same growth in property. Mm. And in some cases, if you bought at the peak of the market, your property is going to be worth less than the price that you paid for it. So for those investors, yeah, definitely they will struggle to to go on to property number two and property number three. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's more the people with multiple properties and, and larger loans that struggle with getting finance. If, you know, we find that for the average uh, income owner, the ability for them to borrow money in this market is still as good as ever. Mm. Mm. You just need to be, as we spoke about, um, present the best case possible to the lender that you're a good person to, to give money to, right? Exactly. And keep all your records, um, you know, Keep all your records in order. Be ready to because the the documents that you're going to be asked for mm. is greater than what it was, you know, twelve or eighteen months ago. So, so it's we're firmly in a. Again, we're talking about Sydney and Melbourne, other markets, Brisbane, for example, Adelaide, um, Tasmania are in a different part of their cycle. But we'll stick on Sydney and Melbourne. Um, uh, firmly in a buyer's market, um, which means that the the power essentially is in the hands of the buyer rather than the seller. Uh, a seller's market is where people are jacking up prices and, uh, and and getting good earns. So you want to sell in a seller's market, you want to buy when it's in a buyer's market. When you look at Sydney and Melbourne being a buyer's market right now, and, and to your point about people who bought at the top of the cycle who may be in negative equity, you know, it's only really a problem. Uh, you only realise your loss when you sell your property. So if you need to sell your property uh, under what you paid for it, that's it's a pretty painful uh, situation. But Buyers in a buyer's market, we're in a buyer's market, can capitalise on that if they're ready to go. So what does it mean about being mortgage ready in a buyer's market so you can capitalise on these these properties? Yeah, you want to be able to move quickly and take advantage of the opportunities as they present themselves. So Mm. to be finance ready means you want to have a pre-approval in place. So to get a pre-approval, you need the the normal documentation that you would. Um, So we recommend, you know, so that's your standard things like your bank statements, your pay slips. Um, credit card statements, ID and so forth. So Mm. you want all of those handy to be able to apply for for credit and again, you know, look after your living expenses, especially in the the three months before you're you're applying because that's what the banks are going to be looking at. And, you know, it's really sticking to that budget and then getting a a pre-approval in place up to the the maximum limit that you're prepared to spend on a property. Mm. And and what have you seen the good investors doing in terms of buying buying tactics um uh, in in a sort of a buyer's market any any tips or inside inside secrets that you've seen seen people do well yeah well it's it's about understanding the market so the basic fundamentals of researching being on the ground talking to agents finding out what the true value of the properties are and what properties so when you um, and, and quite often, like in anything, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So it's those relationships that, you know, that we see where people have been, you know, um, working hard and building those relationships. If a good deal comes up, they'll be 
you know, the agent will be on the phone to them quickly and they will be able to take advantage of that knowing that they're, they're pre-approved and ready to go. You, you get around a fair bit in the property space and um, uh, I know you work right across all the different um, stakeholders involved in it from uh, conveyances and building and pest inspections and lenders and um, accountants, etc. cetera. Um, uh, buyers agents, how, how you know, and you'll read on the street from from that particular subsector of the industry coming as it from a mortgage mm. broker. Is it good times to be a buyers agent, or are they they struggle a little bit? Do you think considering uh, they're changing market? Yeah, I, I definitely think they're struggling a little bit. Mm. Uh, what you see in the buyers agent market is there's a lot more competition in the market, and there's a lot smaller areas in terms of what are, you know the areas that are considered potential for growth and yeah. growth, and also have the the yields that are attractive. So it's definitely. You know, there's more players and a smaller pool, right? So it's definitely a tough time for, for buyers agents and I think they will continue um, to struggle over the next sort of 12 months. Mm. Yeah, the good ones will always be good and, um, you know, with a reputation. But, yeah, some of the smaller players I think will struggle a little bit. And it's in a changing market now that um, often it's better to have a buyer's agent because you need to, number one, have a read on the market and a true understanding of how it might fluctuate, but uh, to your point that there is um, not as many locations where buyers agents are active means that there's a whole, it's a, it's a lot more concentrated in a particular area. Uh, so if you're not using a buyer's agent, you're trying to buy in those areas, you, you're probably competing against a lot more uh, well-educated, smart, sophisticated, professional buyers. Uh, uh, what do you think about those those people in those markets buying without buyer's agents? Do you reckon they're disadvantaged? Uh, again, it's it's depending on it's like anything. It's depending on the work that you put in yourself mm. and the the how hard you're prepared to do your research and and negotiate. Um, obviously, with a buyer's agent, it takes a lot of that away from you. But the people that I see that are passionate about property and love doing it, still you know, doing just good. Yeah, still still do well. But it, you know, for me and and for you, you know, we're, our focus is on helping others mm. rather than helping ourselves. So yeah, I'm quite happy to employ someone to to go and find a property on my behalf. To go, and and knowing your portfolio, you've done pretty well out of it as well. Um, a lot of people right now, and and I was reading the weekend papers uh, a couple of days ago now, and um, uh, there's a couple of big pieces in there around how uh, people. There is less stock on the market, so it's like a real estate story. There's there's less on there's less stock on the market right now because less people are listing their properties to sell because they feel as though they're not going to get the price point that they might have got a year or so ago. So those people who are listing properties right now are um, uh, they're motivated sellers because otherwise they'd be holding on to their their property to wait till markets to improve. So I paint a bit of a context there. Um, why do people sell properties? Death, divorce, uh, distress. You know. The, the 4Ds, or what they call it. It's an interesting marketplace. And what's happening, and, and my read of it is that, and, and a couple of articles I read, spoke about uh, a lot of people now are choosing to stay put where they are right now. So this is an owner occupied type thing, uh, choosing to stay put where they are and spending money on, on renovations uh, to either improve their asset. Um, to make it more livable or to improve it at a point in time to either change its its capital value and, and shift at a different level or, or wait for the future and do it there. So two, this is a double barrel question. Number one, for, for our listeners who are owner occupiers and we're thinking about moving and now staying put, how do you, what's the best way to finance renovations in this market? Um, and number two, for investors looking to um, do capital increases right now. Is it a good time to be doing it it's considering softening market values and you know not really reaping your returns on that going to further debt without getting a greater capital value? So we'll deal with number one for our occupiers. What's the best way to, to get some bucks to do a reno? Definitely. Obviously, you know, there's lots of people with plenty of equity in their properties mm. um, that have held for a number of years. So um, for those guys, obviously fairly easy. They've got the equity in their properties. The, the value of the renovations that they're doing, um, so an on-completion valuation can be done. So we, we provide the contract and the plans to the valuer and say this is what the property will be worth. So um, those actual, you know, the increase in capital value can be taken into account prior to starting the renovation. So that's something that, that people can do. Okay. And your second point in regards to accessing equity and, you know, you as in property investors and, you know, um, and we've always said as the market was really hot, be careful in terms of how much equity you access in those properties. And, mm. yeah, as the market was sort of going out, we were saying, you know, don't 
leverage above sort of you know eighty percent, you know, keep your buffer in because if the market does drop by ten or fifteen percent, you don't want to get into a position where you've got negative equity mm. in your investment properties because as property investors, you want to have an exit plan. And so, you know, your exit plan is to you know, the the final one is to sell the property and to pay off the debt. Whereas if you can't sell the property to clear the debt, you're in a you're in a, a, a not. You don't a, want to be there. You don't want to be in that mm. position. So you 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 have to be um, careful in terms of you know to what extent you're leveraging your property mm. uh, in a softening market. T- timing your renovation, whether you're owner occupier or. Uh, investment, two very different things, you know. If you're going to live in a house and I know you went for a reno a couple of years ago yourself mm, and that yeah, was, definitely. you know, to make it more livable and that's all cool. So uh, you, you, you have a very different uh, view. It's a more of an emotional decision rather than a financial decision. But as property investors, um, uh, you still turn on the TV and there's always some renovation show about, you know, the block or whatever and how you can flip a property and become a bazillionaire overnight, uh, which is pretty risky. Uh, in, in this current market in Sydney and Melbourne, again, going back to those two. So it's all about timing and renovation. I know that uh, in in uh, if you go back to 13, 2013, 14, 15, when, when markets are running hot um, uh, with our portfolio, we actually chose not to do renovations in that period of time because it didn't really matter. It was going to go up in value. So mm. I didn't need to spend the money to get the capital uplift. Um, uh, so it's about the time. It's, it's a renovation you don't do sometimes is the best reno. Exactly. Um, but in a, in a market like we're in right now with – uh, you know, softening markets to actually draw down on equity in a property to invest in doing a renovation might not be the right strategy for a lot of people in in, in these marketplaces. How do you work that out? Whether it's right, is that mm. sort of a, a a thing for your broker or your accountant, or who can help you with that sort of thing? Yeah, well, there's a number of factors that mm. come into when is the right time to invest a property. And you, if you think as a property investor, why would I invest? So one is to increase the capital. Two is to attract a better quality tenant. And you know, in in a softening market, and where you know, in in some places, I know in some places where we've got property in sort of you know, South East Queensland, the vacancy rates are increasing, right? So you want to make your property more attractive. Um, so because the aim is to hold those properties long term, right? Mm. So. In one case, a, a pro might be yes. Let's do a renovation because I'm going to attract a, a better quality tenant. I'm going to have more likely to have that property, you know, vacated rather than um, you know occupied rather than being vacated. So, so in that case, then it's a pro, and obviously to increase the the value. And sometimes a, a cosmetic renovation can you know, present a property in a much better light to a value, which means, yeah, you can access, you know, some additional funds to to do something else. Mm. Mm. So many different complicated what-ifs, questions, Mm. hypotheticals. Uh, You talk a lot of property. Do you talk a lot about property when you're not at work or do you sort of try and get away from it? Like do you always end up chatting about it at barbecues and people go, what do you do? Um, In some – I mean, I'm passionate about property Mm. and the the people that I know – have property. I, I I love to talk property with them, like mm-hmm. Monserrat and I. Yeah, we 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 would would definitely talk about it. Uh, and you know, friends that I know invest, but other people know. And I think you know, it's it's a more of a personal thing. And a lot of my uh, friends and family probably don't know to the extent you know what, what you do, what I do, and 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 because you know, I think for some people having one property is enough, and they think a mortgage. You tell them you've got multiple properties and I paying think you're mortgage. Mad. Yeah, it's uh, because they they don't see it that the tenant covers most of your cost. They mm. they view it as how they're paying their mortgage. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's better to you know, keep some things close to your chest. Yeah, I, I don't think about. It. I never think about it really. I just it just is right. But mm. uh, and and for you and and I'll, I'll round out with this this question. Um, what's twenty nine nineteen looking for you? Sort of from your your property journey, you're going to be in the game, or you're you're cashing up, waiting for some good opportunities to come your way. Yeah. So at the moment, it's more about just looking at. I'm I'm going through a process of refinancing and fixing and extending a lot of interest only for me with mm. with my portfolio, and then looking at you know some some other opportunities, more unique sort of opportunities where, uh, you know, maybe potentially on a commercial front. Okay. Smaller developments. Good and, yielding stuff. Yeah, looking at sort of how we can, you know, optimise the 
the cash flow and make some chunks of cash mm. at the same time. Do you do your own mortgages or you get someone to do it for you in your office? Yeah, so um, it, yeah, and as an own mortgage broker, yeah. um, we're not allowed to do our own, your own mortgages. mortgages. Yeah, so, so someone else has to do yeah, it for so us. Yeah, that's yeah, handy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. All right, enjoy the chat, Ross. Um, anything to add? Anything to finish with? Give, give me a, give me a piece of inspiration about twenty nineteen as a property investor before we go. Uh, 2019 is a year to, I would say, to to really not be aggressive, but to take advantage of opportunities as they arise. So whether that be to renegotiate your rates, renegotiate your rents, and there will be some real buying opportunities as well. So, you know, one, as they come up, don't be afraid to act when you know it's a good thing. So be finance ready, as we've spoken mm. about, and uh, use some of those tactics in terms of buying we discussed. So thanks for your time. Ross, yeah, pleasure, good, mate. And uh, we get back in. We'll have a chat about our portfolio. We, you, you did a lot of work uh, back end of 2018, just on um, a lot of not refinancing, but repricing and fixing some stuff. And uh, uh, our, so our portfolio looks, uh, in terms of a, a cash flow uh, position, looks a lot better these days. So we'll get you back in. We'll have a chat through that because people are always asking me what we're up to. I, I don't know what we're up to really. Do we? I've got to well, we'll get my head around that. Goals, yeah, yeah, I think we're going to have to set some goals on that. Um, I'm buying a bit personally at the moment, not really doing a lot within the uh, the smart property uh, investment portfolio, but um, we're always uh, quite pragmatic as opportunities come down and uh, we don't really, I don't think we've got a, we've got a pre-approval price. We don't at the moment. No, but, uh, no. Okay, maybe we'll sort that out. Anyway, uh, thanks for your time. It's really good. Thank nice you. One. Thanks, And you're doing something also, um, a podcast yourself. Yeah, yeah. so Monzerol and I from uh, and Jeremy and Scott, uh, we're doing uh, the Australian Property Educators pod- podcast. So okay. we've just got about four or five episodes. Um, is it any good? Is it better than this one? Oh, mate. <laughs> different, Go, no go check it out. Go yeah, and check it. Where, where do you find it? You just Google Australian Property Educators. Yeah, so it's on all the you know, SoundCloud, iTunes, all, all of those. All that sort of stuff. All anyway. those, so, yeah. Go and check it out. Let me know. Give, give them one stars and negative reviews. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me know if you like it. Yeah. Um, uh, I've, I've tuned in a couple of them and, uh, yeah, very different. It's... Um, uh, obviously, um, uh, Ross um, and Scott from uh, from Aussie and uh, Munzerul and Jeremy from Keshab, um, obviously my accountants, you, you've probably heard it beforehand, uh, see the world, uh, well, discuss things differently than I do. I'm just a, a journalist yeah. trying to extract some information and stories. You you guys get into the meat. So um, anyway, go and check it out. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, remember to check out smartpropertyinvestment.com.au uh, so you're the first to know what's going on in property and property investing every single day of the week. Uh, there's an email, a newsletter goes out every morning, uh, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au forward slash subscribe. If you're a social media person, Smart Property HQ, go and search it. Uh, and if you like what we're doing here, the stories that we're telling, uh, we like to include absolutely everyone involved in in property whether it's your first property or your hundredth property trials and tribulations successes challenges get in touch with the team we'd love to get you on the show to have a bit of a chat with us Uh, you can email editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au remember click the subscribe button wherever you're listening to this and we'll be back again next time until then bye bye the information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.